Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Today, we are going to learn about the importance of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, we know about Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, uh, I can say that God, it, it is like sun, light and heat. So, they three are one, but the three have different um, functions. So, now we see that... Uh, um, Actually, I, I would like to bring it up this uh, topic like the birth of Christ. We see God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit uh, in action. So here we see that uh, during the birth of Christ, uh, God sends an angel, God the Father, to speak to Mary. And uh, she, Mary conceives the word of God through uh, the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God comes upon her and she conceives and brings forth um, the Son of God. So we see that three are in action together. So uh, this is just an example. So Mary is only a vessel used by God. Uh, then uh, after uh, Jesus actually spoke, um, I mean, in, uh, at the age of 12, uh, you know, we don't hear him talk anything. But in Luke 2, 51 and 52, uh, it said that he was, he went um, and subjected himself, obeyed, uh, in obedience to uh, his earthly parents and uh, he, you see that he is uh, silent and Bible says Jesus grew Bible says that he grew uh, in wisdom one minute let me was it? <coughs> Luke chapter 2 verses 51 and 52 then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and, faith and man. So we see here that uh, Jesus increased in wisdom and uh, stature in favor of God and favor of man. He was silent for 18 years. There was uh, no uh, public appearance as such. Or, uh, you know, Jesus uh, tried to proclaim his authority. Uh, then the first uh, um, uh, physical appearance of the Holy Spirit we see when uh, the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus uh, in the form of a dove. Like uh, was Holy Spirit mentioned in, uh, in the Old Testament? There was no, uh, uh, you know, scriptural basis, strong scriptural basis for Holy Spirit indwelling. Uh, but Holy Spirit came, uh, empowered people and he spoke through people like the prophets, the prophet, prophetess. And then um, after he finishes his work, you see that he leaves. Only a few people, we see that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit works uh, throughout. Um, now when we see John uh, chapter 7 verse 37. Let's read John chapter 7 verse 37. On, on the last day, uh, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried uh, out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. Uh, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom uh, those believing in him would receive, uh, receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus was not yet glorified. That's why the Holy Spirit was not yet given. So, uh, the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit was uh, not evident um, in the Old Testament times. You, even in Isaiah 44.3, uh, it says, For I will pour out water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessings on your offsprings. So God is promising that uh, even in Ezekiel uh, 36 chapter, you see that God is promising that he will pour out his spirit. He will uh, send his spirit and um, even Jesus mentioning about it. So now the um, Holy Spirit was not common, you know, but they, so he empowered certain people and uh, used them to do the work of the Lord. Um, so you see in J uh, Numbers 27, 18. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua the son of Nun with you, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hands on him. 
hand on him sorry so uh, here we see that uh, joshua had the spirit of god uh, in him so because he was going to be the next leader god spirit uh, anointed him and uh, uh, judges 3:10 the spirit of the lord came upon him and he judged israel he he went out uh, to war and the lord uh, delivered kushan uh, rishathaim Uh, king of mesopotamia into the, his hands and his hand prevailed over uh, him othniel it is spoken about othniel uh, he uh, because the holy spirit and uh, holy spirit was upon him he he was the judge and he w- he could win battle yeah, and uh, we also see many incidents in the bible like even uh, uh, if we talk about samson so suddenly the um, samson then uh, the holy spirit uh, comes upon him and he takes the job on of a donkey and he kills uh, so many people like around 1000 people so different incidents we see that uh, the holy spirit comes and uh, you know takes over and then um, the this people are um, you know used by god mightily uh, but the indwelling of the holy spirit is only possible after the resurrection of christ here we see uh, luke third chapter 21 verses 21 when all the people were baptized it came to pass that jesus was all, uh, also was baptized and while he prayed the heaven opened and the holy spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said you are my beloved son in whom i am well pleased so here is the first time that Uh, the holy spirit comes in a bodily form and dwells um, uh, and he, you see uh, um, and the voice and the holy spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said you are my beloved son in whom i am well pleased this is the first time you see that in a bodily form holy spirit comes upon jesus so this is the first uh, induction in the new testament about the holy spirit but uh, then again uh, we see that uh, uh, in matthew th- chapter 3 uh, verses um, 11 uh, john the baptist says i indeed baptize you with water unto the repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than i whose sandals i am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire so it's talking about jesus baptizing the people that he is going to lead with the holy spirit and, and with fire so um, so this is the first uh, in the new testament holy spirit introduced in a different way now i want to bring to your attention uh, acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power uh, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil her god was with him so here if you can understand the importance of the holy spirit jesus came to ministry at the age of 30 the first thing he did was being baptized and fill, being filled with the holy spirit so that means uh, he didn't do any ministry without uh, being anointed by the holy spirit so here it says how um, you know Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the holy spirit and power then who went about doing good he was anointed with holy spirit and power and that compelled him to go on doing good and uh, deliver uh, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him so he he was he went on doing good he delivered the uh, oppressed and he healed people so this is all with the power of the spirit you see the importance of the holy spirit if jesus uh, needed the holy spirit so much we we all should uh, uh, you know um, try and understand how much you and i need the holy spirit uh, because without the without the holy spirit ministry will be really difficult that's why the first thing jesus did is he was baptized when he came to ministry after that he was driven to the wilderness he fasts and he prays then you see his ministry starts before that you don't see that jesus uh, without the holy spirit he did not go and minister to anybody you understand the importance of the holy spirit holy spirit god without being uh, uh, having the power of god 
without being anointed by the holy spirit he did not do anything and the first scripture that he reads uh, is uh, i mean when he uh, stands up there in luke chapter 4 verses 18 17 verse and he was handed the book of the prophet uh, prophet isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written uh, the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord so you see jesus uh, reading the scripture here and the first opening words are the spirit of the lord is upon me so what is more evident what has to be more evident upon our lives is the spirit of god you see the importance of the spirit the spirit of the lord is upon me because he anointed me and the purpose is revealed so when when this when you are when you have the spirit of god your purpose is more clear and uh, you know why you are called what is your calling what you are supposed to do here you see the spirit of the lord was upon him because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captive and recover of recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to uh, proclaim the acceptable year of the lord this is what jesus did if you see this is what jesus did so if holy spirit uh, anointing is so much important to jesus how much more it is to uh, us you, you know in um, john chapter 14 let's see that john chapter 14 verse 18 uh, it says i will not leave you as uh, you orphans i will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because i live uh, you will also and at, uh, and that day uh, you will know that i am my father and uh, you uh, in me and i in you um, so he says i will not leave you orphans uh, sorry if you read the verses uh, 17th verse uh, 16 and 17 and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you so god here this is the first time jesus is introducing the uh, holy spirit as somebody who will dwell with you that means live with you and live in you who is going to live dwell with you and live in you because god says i don't want to leave you as orphans because jesus said i don't want to leave you as orphans that means if we don't have holy spirit we are like an orphan child remember this if we are uh, not having the holy spirit of god we are like a orphan child because god says i don't want to leave you as orphans so i'll give you my spirit to be with you to dwell in you to dwell with you and Uh, to live to to be with you and to dwell in you so very important so the purpose that god is giving us uh, why why he wants uh, the holy spirit to be with us because i will not leave you as orphans i i will come to you the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive the world cannot receive the holy spirit because it uh, because holy spirit is very very precious to god uh, neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and you will uh, and he will be with you so um so we we understand here that um, uh, holy spirit anointing is very very important to us we cannot neglect uh, if jesus needed the holy spirit so much and jesus uh, uh, is the baptizer uh, of uh, baptizer who baptizes us with holy spirit and fire that's what john the baptist says and when whole jesus before he starts his ministry after being silent for 18 years uh, the first thing he do, does is he goes and get uh, he is baptized in water then uh, when he comes up he is praying and he receives the holy spirit it's very evident it is mentioned that he was praying which is uh, such a wonderful thing so he was praying and uh, he he we see that holy spirit uh, comes upon him in a bodily form as like a dove and uh, holy spirit rests upon him and he says if um, you know i don't want to leave you as orphans and i will uh, if i go i will send you the um, you know and uh, if if you love me keep my commandments and 16th verse 
John 14, 16, and I will pray to the, pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor uh, knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So, uh, here it is so evident that Jesus is talking about uh, giving the Holy Spirit. Even uh, we saw that in John 7, 37. He says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to him, me and I will give him rivers of um, what is like, Let's see. Uh, on, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his uh, uh, heart will flow rivers of living water. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Um, so here we see that Jesus says, I will send the Holy Spirit and he will dwell with you and dwell in you and dwell and, and be with you. So these are the things that God is mentioning. So let's see um, what are the functions of the Holy Spirit when he comes into you. Like, you know, in, uh, when Holy, why, why is he important to us? Because um, Bible says in John 14, 26, Bible says, but the help of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So, Holy Spirit is the one who will bring to remembrance whatever Jesus has said to us. So, uh, you know, he's a teacher. Uh, he will teach us all things. Then, even in 1 John uh, 2.27, it says, The anointing will teach you all things. We don't have much time to go through all that. But remember, 1 John uh, 2.27, he says, The anointing teaches you all things. Now, the, other, uh, the next thing is, why is he important to us? Because he's a helper. Uh, you see in um, John 14, 26, uh, he's a helper. He helps us. Even in uh, uh, Romans uh, 8, 26, uh, the word of God says that uh, he helps us in our infirmities. He helps us. You know, even during prayer, he helps us. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for or we ought um, uh, as we ought. So, here we see that the life of the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. So, he's a helper. He helps in our weaknesses. Then, he's the spirit of truth. We see in um, uh, John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, uh, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So, he, you see that the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. He will bring us to truth and he will convict us of the truth and he will testify of uh, about Jesus. And the fourth thing we can see is uh, he is the one who convicts us. John 16, 8 And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So, he is a uh, he is the one who will convicts uh, who convicts us, um, you know, about the sin. He he will convict us to agree. Then he is an intercessor. We also see that he will help us in our weaknesses, and he is also our intercessor. Romans eight twenty six. Please make a note of all the scriptures. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know uh, what we or uh, we should uh, pray for as we ought, but the whole, uh, the Spirit Himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. We have uh, two people that are interceding for us. One is Jesus, and the other one is the Holy Spirit. He makes intercessions for us. In, he inter, he's an intercessor. We we see that in uh, Hebrews seven twenty five that Jesus is interceding for us that we will be saved till the end. And here we see the Holy Spirit is also interceding for us. Um, so we do not, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself uh, Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah! He's an intercessor. Then um, we uh, we can see the another point is He's the sealer. He's He's a sealer. He seals us. You know, uh, he puts a stamp on us. Ephesians 1, 13. 
in him you are, you also trusted after you heard the uh, uh, word of truth the gospel of your salvation whom also having believed uh, whom also um, believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise so um, after you believe you receive a seal that is the holy spirit so even in uh, uh, ephesians 4:30 is again mentioned about um 4:30 uh, and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption so we have a seal on us that is the holy spirit if you don't have that seal uh, you may not make it to heaven so this seal is important you have you are pro, you were sealed with the holy spirit uh, then um he is source of god's love that means he is the one uh, you know who releases the love of god into our hearts we we don't have the love of god in our hearts but when we receive the holy spirit uh, uh, in romans 5 5 we see clearly now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us holy spirit is given to us and he is doing um, um, you know god's things in our lives that means he is transforming us to be um, to be formed into the image of god the fir- the foremost thing that is required in our lives is the love of god we see that uh, holy spirit is um, you know uh, giving us the uh, pouring out the love of god into our hearts um, then another thing is um, he leads us he is he is he is the one who leads us romans 8 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are sons of god for um so he is a leader he leads us so for as many as if you want to be called the sons and daughters of god we we are supposed to be led by the holy spirit Because why we have an example jesus is our uh, you know um our example we are supposed to follow him what happened to him he was led by the holy spirit you see once he was filled in the holy spirit he was led by the holy spirit wherever he had to go uh, um, he was led by the holy spirit because how god um, um, you know jesus of nazareth was anointed with the holy spirit and power and he went on doing good healing the sick and delivering the oppressed that's what the bible says so uh, jesus was anointed with his uh, spirit and that's uh, and uh, that the, that's the way we were supposed to we are supposed to uh, be led so those who are led by the spirit of god are called sons and daughters of the uh, sons and daughters of god then uh, another thing is he guides us uh, john 16 13 let's quickly go through the scriptures john 16 13 however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into the all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he um, and he uh, will tell you things to come so he is a guide so a guide will say will tell you uh, you know he will guide you in the path of truth and he will tell you what is going to come what is going to happen later uh, then uh, witness uh, so we, uh, turn to romans 8 8:16 The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God the spirit himself bears witness so uh, even in acts 1:8 we see that when the holy spirit comes upon you you will receive power and then the, immediately what happens you will be my witness that's what god says in even acts 1:8 so then he gives power acts 1:8 he is the one who gives us power acts 18 but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and unto the ends of the earth so here uh, he is the person who endues us with power so um, these are the 11 things that we spoke i'll just read uh, through them quickly um, holy spirit is our teacher why is he important to us because he's our teacher he teaches into um, you know teaches us all things 
and then he's a helper he's a spirit of truth he's the one who convicts us he's the intercessor and uh, he's the sealer uh, who seals us for the kingdom of god for the day of redemption um, he's a source of godly love uh, he is the one who leads us guides us and uh, he helps us to be the witness and gives power so these are the few things that uh, uh, th that's why this is the reason why holy spirit is important and uh, who gives us the holy spirit we have uh, read this in uh, john chapter 14 uh, he says i will pray to my father that uh, he will send you the holy spirit right so jesus is the one who baptizes us with the holy spirit so um, if you see john 14 16 uh, and i will pray uh, the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever here the uh, jesus uh, when jesus is talking about uh, holy spirit coming uh, coming into us he is going to stay with us forever Pre uh, previously in old testament we uh, we old testament we have seen that holy spirit visits empowers somebody and after the work is done uh, he leaves them but here he says he will live with you forever so um, jesus is the one who baptizes us uh, one uh, john 133 I did not know him but he who sent me to baptize with water said to him said to me upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on whom this is uh, he who baptizes with the holy spirit so john the baptist is talking uh, talking about jesus he says i do not know that person but uh, uh, god told me he who uh, sent me that is god the father who sent me he says um, upon whom you see the holy spirit descending like a dove he saw the uh, holy spirit descending that is the person who is going to baptize you with holy spirit we have seen uh, even in um, matthew chapter 3 verse 11 we see that uh, i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than i whose sandals i am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with holy spirit and fire so um jesus is the one who is going to baptize us with holy spirit and fire so um we we uh, let's ask him and he we will be filled so a simple step to be filled with the holy spirit is to ask um and uh, we we will uh, actually uh, study all this in detail in the advanced courses so um we today we have learned about why holy spirit is important to us actually um and uh, um if if the holy spirit is important uh to jesus then how much more to us he was before he came into ministry um he was he, he was water baptized and then he was baptized in the holy spirit then the holy spirit led him so um uh, if we are led by the holy spirit we are called the sons and daughters of the god living god and um we see that jesus uh, says i will baptize you with holy spirit uh, and uh, i will pray to the father and uh, you know uh, then he will send the spirit and uh, um, you know and he will uh, he will live with you forever he will dwell in you he will live he will be with you uh, forever and he says i will not leave you as orphans so just imagine if jesus uh, says this we know that god means every word he says if if we do not have the holy spirit then maybe we will be orphaned you know you will always have that gap in your life uh, where you you will feel that you are not able to function uh, completely like you are supposed to so um if you are interested to learn more about uh, the uh, way holy spirit operates and uh, the functions of the spirit and uh, in detail then um, you will uh, find all this in the advanced course thank you god bless you let's uh, pray close it with the word of prayer hallelujah thank you jesus we praise you we give you glory honor power and praise of god god of father yes lord father if holy spirit anointing was important to jesus it's more uh, important to us because father god without whom we we cannot function of father god we cannot do anything of father god because we know holy spirit god helps us in our weaknesses of father god jesus was son of god yet he was baptized in the holy spirit to uh, to be doing good to continue to do good of father god and to heal the 
sick and to deliver the oppressed. He was anointed with Holy Spirit, um, uh, God of Father God. Lord, I pray that we will understand the importance of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Father, ask Jesus to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And your word says, Lord, if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Yes, so God, I pray that Father, everybody that is listening to this message of Father God will come to their knees and pray for that anointing upon their lives, Lord Father. That Father, their lives will change and transform, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything, O oh Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Master. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen.